Hey, good evening, everyone. Thanks for uh, coming out and joining us uh, this evening. Um, first thing I want to do is I want to make sure everybody can hear me. So if you guys can either raise your hand or type something into the question box that lets me know you can hear me, a Y or a uh, yes will do. All right, I'm getting some of those coming in. Um, tonight I have two gentlemen with, with me. Uh, we have Mark Espy and Ron Haight. And uh, they're going to give us a presentation on what they call the compound collar. And uh, I think it's a very uh, timely presentation, um, considering where the market is and uh, where it may end up. Um, and with that, I'm going to throw the uh, presentation to both Mark and Ron. And you guys, when you're ready, uh, have at it. All right. Thanks so much, Chris. Uh, hey, gang, this is Ron Haight. Uh, I'm going to be turning over to Mark here in a second. I'd like to welcome everybody and, and thank you guys for coming out. appreciate your time. As we go through uh, tonight's presentation, uh, you're going to be able to ask questions. Uh, we'll ans I'll be here answering your questions in the text box. Uh, if there's any technical issues, Chris is going to assist with that as well. And we'll have time at the end, is, you know, too, for, for question and answer. So before I go any further, I just want to say the disclaimer. As always, everything that we talk about in this presentation is for educational purposes only and is not advice or recommendation to buy or sell anything. So without any further ado, you heard enough of me. I'm going to throw it off to your host, which is Mr. Mark Espy. Mark, you want to take it away? I got it, Ron. Thank you so much. Uh, if you can... Um I also want to do an audio check, check here very quickly. So if you can hear me clearly, if you could just go ahead and put a yes in the uh, Q&A box. And Ron, I'm not, uh, I'm not seeing anything. Okay. You're getting a and lot of yeses there. Very good. They can hear you. And, uh, and you can see the uh, PowerPoint, I hope. It says the compound collar. Can you see that clearly? Okay, very good. Okay, guys, well, thanks for showing up this evening. It's a real pleasure, and I want to thank Chris for allowing us the opportunity to present to you this evening. Uh, it's a real pleasure. Um, I just want to take just a quick moment and introduce myself. Uh, we already did the disclaimer. I'm the guy on the left side. Um, I'm follically challenged. Uh, actually just had a sparse bit of hair, and I just said, eh, I'm going to get rid of all of it. So that's me on the left. And uh, Ron Haight is the funny guy on your right, and he is funny. Um, so, yes, I'm, let me tell you just a little bit about myself. I'm going to throw over to Ron, and he can tell you a little bit of his background. Uh, I'm a full-time trader. I've been doing this since 2000. I'm also an author. I have several articles out there on the Internet. You can Google me. The last name is ESPY. There's a few of me. There's, I think there's about eight or nine people with that name, but you'll see um, several articles out there on the internet on trading. Uh, so I am a blogger also over at RobinHoodTrader.com, and I post weekly market analysis over there. And uh, we were fortunate enough to be named one of the top 50 financial blogs on the internet. Uh, just recently, so I'm, I feel really good about that. We have a very good following over there. And I'm also a partner at MarketTamer.com and also OptionsRevolution.com. So uh, not much for, for anything else. I have had 25 years in the financial services industry uh, and also a master's degree in education. And uh, married with two kids, and that's me. So Ron, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? All right, Mark, thanks. Hey gang, I am the guy on the right. Um, I'm becoming follically challenged, but not quite as bad as Mark yet. Um, I am uh, 37, and I live in uh, near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm also a full-time trader. I got involved in the stock market about 10 or 12 years ago, uh, essentially from the point of just trying to figure this out and realizing there's only one person that's going to take care of you, and that's you, not the government, not anybody else. So uh, I wanted to learn how to trade, uh, began that process, and uh, now I end up doing, doing
doing what I do now on a daily basis, and I love it. In my previous job, I had spent 17 years in retail. It was my job uh, to understand the consumer, understand what you will pay, how much you will pay, what you will buy, uh, marketing aspects of that, uh, store, you know, merchandising and so forth. So uh, I really enjoyed that. I do like working with people. And uh, it actually comes in quite handy in the market, understanding what companies, you know, truly outperform and are really not going to cover off the ball, like Apple, for instance. You know, those unique companies that, that, that do what they do and do it well. So uh, don't, I won't bore you with any more details, but uh, happy to have you guys here. Um, and Mark, you just want to take it away and run with it? Okay, thank you. Okay, we're going to get the show started. I want to be respectful of your time, so we're going to draw back the curtain. And the first thing that I know all of you know is that owning stocks can be risky. There's a plethora of things, market risk, interest rate risk, inflation risk, business risk, credit risk, currency risk, geopolitical events, liquidity, the ability to get in and out quickly of a position. There's a lot of things that you need to be concerned about when you're trading stocks. So what is a compound collar? The strategy allows you peace of mind in uncertain markets, and I think you'd agree with me. In fact, I had uh, an interesting uh, discussion with Chris uh, a couple weeks ago when we were talking, uh, and uh, we were both uh, talking about May 6th and the flash crash and how crazy. I was sitting in front of the computer screen, and it looked like a pinball machine. And I don't know if you guys experienced that, but uh, numbers that I have not seen uh, on my trading screen were popping up. Bid-ass spreads were so wide you could drive a truck through them. You couldn't close anything. You couldn't open anything. So it just supported the, I think, the my sense of the way that I like to trade, and that is I like to trade hedged because they still don't know what caused the flash crash of May 6th. Geopolitical events, unfortunately, are still a part of what we have to face in our daily lives as well. So if you're trading money that you cannot afford to lose, uh, you might be very interested in what I have to share with you this evening. This strategy can allow you peace of mind. You can increase your position. Uh, and typically when you hear guys like Kramer talking about in a good stock, you know, let's, let's dollar cost average or average down. Let's buy on the dips and so forth. And when you do that, uh, you know, uh, typically you're buying, you're coming out of pocket. And you might be chasing uh, after a stock and, and actually buying the falling knife syndrome, you know, getting into it, and who knows if it's going to continue to go down or not. But in this situation, in the uh, strategy that I have this evening, I'm going to show you how to do that without coming out of your pocket for, with any more money. So you can, in, in fact, increase your position size without any additional out-of-pocket expense. It does work extremely well in IRA accounts, and that will become apparent to you as I move forward. You can do it in a margin account as well, no question about it, but um, the fact of the matter is that there are some certain tax advantages, certainly, in doing it in an IRA account. And it's a marvelous strategy for building long-term wealth. So if you're a short-term trader, um, I would hope that you would have another account where you could do some of your short-term strategies because this particular strategy is best used if you're planning on being in the stock for probably a year or longer. Okay, so what stocks are needed? Well, what we need to take a look at are best-of-breed stocks. And the ideal traits would include, would begin with a business that you understand. And I think that's a logical place to begin. As a, for instance, I come from uh, an insurance background. I spent 25 years in the insurance business, and I know the business inside and out, so therefore I un really understand. There's a lot of people that don't understand that business. Ron understands retail because that's his background. So it only makes sense to segue into a business or a type of a stock that, that you understand. And it, by the way, we're buying businesses. We're not buying stocks. You need to understand that we need to buy solid businesses. And it begins with starting to look at, you, you need to put together a watch list. In a watch list, you need to do your fundamental due diligence. And how many should be in that list? I typically have about 25 in the list, but I'm not trading 25 because not all of them are ripe to trade at the moment. So what do I look for? I look for a company that has low to no debt. 
when you're in a stressful situation, an economic environment where you're trying to move the top line to the bottom line, and you need to be, uh, you're, you're, you're skinning up your operational expense, and you don't want to have to be paying down debt. You don't want to have a huge debt load in a situation like that when your margins are thinner. You want to make sure that the earnings per share growth is it's happening quarter over quarter. We're growing quarter over quarter. Strong management. How do you know you have strong management? You know, there are some key ratios that you can look at, like return on assets, return on equity. And you can see how the company is growing, and you can see how they're keeping the operational expense down. If they are spending money, it's for um, R&D, infrastructure build, and that sort of thing. Uh, a company that possesses a niche, and this is kind of um, a Buff, Warren Buffett type um, of, of a, an approach, and that is that there's a niche, and Warren Buffett talks about a moat that is placed around the company. Um, so a company that has some kind of a quasi-monopoly. You can't always get that, but it's nice if you can. Good brand name awareness. Uh, Coca-Cola is an example there. Uh, there's a lot of other beverage companies out there, but Coke probably comes to mind quicker than any of them. I like companies that have emerging market exposure because we're more and more a global economy. And uh, I just think it gives you that, that, uh, um, that, that diversification, certainly. Um, top line revenue, I mentioned this before, top line revenue is moving to the bottom line. I like to have a higher beta stock because in this particular strategy, you don't want a stock that's just going to sit there and languish because uh, it, this is not going to work for you, for you if you do that. So you can find best of breed stocks that have all of these characteristics but also move. Now I don't care how high beta your stock is, you're going to go through periods of consolidation as well. So you're going to have to realize that, and um, you're going to have to manage through that. We'll talk about that moving forward here. OK, so what stocks are needed? We complement fundamental due diligence by timing the market with our technical indicators. So technical analysis is crucial. You, you need to have a good understanding of support and resistance. And I talk about that constantly to our students, about a confluence of um, indicators that that allow us to understand, hey, where is the consensus of where support and resistance is located? If you ask 10 people a question on a particular subject and you want to get their feedback on it, and all 10 people are known to be experts, yet they, get, they give you an opinion, yet it comes to you from a different perspective. Okay, So the premise of their uh, conclusion it might be a bit different how they got to their bottom line. But if they all get to, or many of them get to the same bottom line, that's very powerful because it comes at you from 10, ten different directions. Well, that's what I'm talking about. And I don't use 10 indicators. That's too cluttered. But if you have three or four or five indicators that you use on your chart, and they're all telling you the same thing, yet they're coming from a different direction, yet they, they are essentially uh, telling you the same thing, that's extremely powerful. We also want to know if the stock is in favor or out of favor, and that is the sentiment. So uh, at markettamer.com, we also consider sentiment indicators um, to give you a holistic view of the entire situation. OK, so the first, the way we start here is I'm assuming now that we have a stock that is you know, an extremely strong stock. Um, and all of the, the aforementioned things we've gone through. So I'm going to buy the stock, and I'm also then going to buy a front month long put. Now, I, I talk to my students about where, where, where are you going to place this put? Are you going to place it at the money, in the money, out of the money? It depends upon your expectation of the stock and where it's going to go. It depends upon which, whether you're risk averse or not, uh, how much money you want to spend for it. Do you want just a safety net? Do you want to just cinch it up close? You know, if you expect that the stock is going to run hard to the upside, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to buy a put at the money or in the money. You just want a, 
uh, a safety net because if you're wrong, and you can be wrong, uh, that you have that safety net. If there is less than two weeks in the options cycle left, then what you would want to consider doing is instead of buying the front month, you want to go to the next month out. Now, you guys, I know Chris's group is very sophisticated, and you're saying to yourself, why in the hell would you ever buy a front month long option? I mean, it's been pounded into everybody's head that's ever, you know, that knows anything about options that if you do that, you know, theta is going nuts. But what your exchange for that is that your gamma is extremely sensitive. So, uh, so there's a, a push-pull here. There's a trade-off on it. And uh, so that delta is going to be moving extremely quickly when the stock moves up and down. So in English, what we're talking about is as the stock drops, the put protects us, and it protects us extremely quickly. But the downside to that is time decay roads quickly as well. So what's the benefit versus the cost in all of this? Well, we gain <clears throat> peace of mind, and that cannot be understated. You know, when I first began trading, I traded with a, a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety, and maybe some of you do as well. And maybe some of you have stories and horror stories that you can tell about um, you know losing a ton of money very quickly. You know, hearkening back, you know, quickly to the flash crash event. You know, those people that had stops on and they thought the stop was going to protect them. You know that that becomes a market order, and there were horror stories about some of those stop orders being triggered when the stocks were down close to zero. That's a nightmare. And uh, I have nightmares I could share with you as well. And you just don't like to live through those kind of days. So the peace of mind of being able to know that you can trade and make money consistently, yet you can do it with peace of mind, that's marvelous. So you can profit on a bullish move, because what we have, the position I'm talking about, beginning with, is a married put, which is the synthetic equivalent to a long call. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the puts will profit during a bearish correction. And right now, it looks like the market's turning over. It'll be interesting to see. Chris and I were just talking before we began here about where it's going to go. Um, you know, on the SPX, we broke the 20. The 20 simple moving average was just tremendous support all the way from early September. And it just broke right through there like it wasn't even there. So the uh, question is whether we're going to have follow through on it. But I'm not worried about it. And in the stocks that I'm in, I'm not worried about it because I'm in this position. I have puts. I have my protection. And I'm not waiting. Now those that are deciding to put on protection at this time, the, because of the volatility increase, I think the VIX popped up over 22, and it had been languishing around 18, 19, and so forth. So it went up a little over two points. So it means that the cost of protection is going to cost you more at this point. Um, so, uh, if the stock does not move, though, see, that's the thing that we want to be aware of. If it doesn't move, what we can do is we can add a short call to help offset the cost of the put, thereby completing the caller. But we're going to leg into this position with a married put to begin with. So, again, the cost of the peace of mind is the put premium. So the stock that I'm going to use tonight, and this is a real trade. This is out of my IRA account. Um, I currently have six of these compound callers going on over there right now, and every one of them are profitable right now. And actually, I'm looking forward to this down move if we get one, because, uh, and you'll see why in a moment. So I did my fundamental due diligence on Fossil. The return on invested capital, 20.1%. Book value per share, 15.34, and that's grown in the last 10 years from $3.25. Very strong move. Sales, uh, $1,714,000,000 versus year 2,504,000,000. Extremely positive growth. EPS, earnings per share, $2.07 versus uh, $0.76. Cents. Estimated forward EPS, three forty eight. Cash from operations. 265 mil, 
and that grew from 34 and a half in the year 2000. Now look at this, their long-term debt, only four million. They can, that's chump change. They can pay that off in a, in a New York second. The, and their income, 195 million. Current multiple about 18, estimated uh, multiple going for 25. I estimate that the stock should be worth closer to 85, maybe even $90. Now when I put this together, uh, the stock w which was last week, maybe it was the week before, uh, the stock was trading at 62. And right now it's at 65, it had been above 70. Okay, uh, moving forward on Fossil, it is an international story. So here we talk about the emerging market exposure, uh, Asia, Europe, Central and South America, Canada, the Caribbean, Mexico, and the Middle East. It's a specialty retailer with a solid distribution network and brand name awareness. So they have storefronts and also internet presence. And with all that said, we're moving into retail season right now. And what I hear, you know, you hear a lot about what's going on with retail and uh, you hear a, a lot of um, people being hired moving forward, a lot of companies hiring uh, temporary help, uh, being very proactive coming into the season. Um, I heard something about the Mall of America not even having uh, an empty storefront, um, in which uh, supposedly is the largest mall in, in the United States. And I especially think that the specialty boutique type retailers are going to do better, like Tiffany's, uh, Fossil, um, and stores like that. Um, so here's the technicals. We're looking at a five-year chart, and we had a top right here, and this was back, what, uh, 2007, I believe it was. Okay, and it came all the way back down here. And then as we were coming up here, we put in a cup and a handle right here, which is nothing more than, and the back side of this cup and handle is a bow flag, which is one of my favorite patterns because it's consolidating and looking for, just resting to look to break out. So what we were looking for was a breakout above this high here, and we got that and it broke through there very smartly and moved up. Then it began to consolidate right around here, and this is when I got into it. So I bought to open 1,000 shares at 53.41, and uh, I bought 10 strike 50 puts at 50 cents, so the total net debit was 53.91. I did that on September 27th. Here's a little closer look at it. Um, I saw this as, you know, it came up here, and this is not a classic flag at all, but it was a consolidation as, after we came up, and this is a smaller cup right here in the larger cup that we see right here. So we came up, and the front lip, we broke up above there, and we moved up from about 46 to about 50. It was about a $4 move, and we began to flatten. Okay, then I saw this coming up here, and it broke above. I entered right here on 927. And then it promptly proceeded to trade in a channel sideways, which is not what I wanted it to do. And when we go through the trades and what I did, you, you can see the reaction that I had with it. And I did not trade this perfectly, and so I want you to know that uh, this uh, strategy ha is very forgiving. So what I did, again, is I bought the stock 53.41, bought, uh, bought to open the October strike 50 long put at 50 cents, net debit 53.91. Max risk is the difference between the net debit and the put at 50, $3.91. The max gain is theoretically unlimited. We had excellent support at 50.71 and the 20 simple moving average acting as just great support and, by the way, still is right now. So there is no current resistance. But one kid, one of the things that you can with chart patterns is you can estimate um, many times a stock will move in segments. So we just moved up on um, earnings, uh, on the earnings announcement. Maybe I could just move this over so you can see this very quickly. Okay, can everybody see the chart here? This is uh, from Th uh, Thinkorswim, can you see that? And I don't know because I can't see. Ron, can everybody see that? Is that coming through?
Ron? I can see it, Mark. Okay, good. Thanks, Chris. Okay, so what we had here is it started to flatten and it moved up. And we moved up here from 62 to about 67. It appears to me, and, and when we moved from here and began to flatten here, that was about a $4 move. Okay, $4 to $5 move, same thing here. So one would expect a breakout. If you're not in this right now, it's not too late. Um, you, but the way that I play these things, this is a flag right now, is you would play it uh, a breakout above, I believe this is the 10th of um, November, and the high there was at uh, well around 70. So you would want it to close above this area, and, and then you could go long. All right. So you can see here. I wanted to show you though. The reason I brought this up is that the 20 simple moving average has been acting as this absolutely fabulous support all the way up here. And I have the put on, so at this point I can certainly. Um, afford to allow it to come down here. Now, if it breaks below here, I might make a further adjustment by moving this to more delta negative. And I'll show you and I'll talk further about what I may do if it does that. Okay, so there is no current resistance, but what one could do is say, you know what, if it breaks out above 70, I'm thinking it could go to 74 or 75, because many times it moves up in segments like that. Okay, this uh, I went to Thinkorswim and on um, Think Back because I didn't because I wanted to show that I told Chris I was going to do a live trade and I didn't take a snapshot of this when I did the trade, um, uh, so I went back to Think Back to show you what the range was and everything and and this is end of day pricing so it was at 53.13 end of day I got it at 53.41 and I got the October uh, put at 50 and so you can see the bid ask spread here is 45 to 60. Okay, this is an example of a risk graph. This is not the specific risk graph for the trade, but I just wanted to show this to you for those of you that are unfamiliar with what a Mary put would look like. This is identical to what you would see uh, for a long call. This is a synthetic equivalent for a long call. So a long stock, long put, and you can see down here in the price slices, not just price slices, the position rather, and you can see that I have a thousand shares, and then I have the here. I, what I did is I put a December 60 put, just to show you. Okay, this has nothing to do with specific numbers. It's just showing you what it looks like. All right, so you have limited risk down here. That's awfully nice. It's kind of like that Barclays commercial. It shows that guy walking the tight wire, an animated commercial, and he does a flip and he comes down. It says managing risk, and you and, and you look, and he's one foot off of the floor. That's it right here, your one foot. You, you, if you're going to fall, you're not going to fall very far. Yet the upside potential is unlimited. Okay, we're going to talk about trade management now. The compound collar is a limited risk trade. And I show you that with, again, the, uh, the risk graph that we just looked at. It's a limited risk trade that allows the trader to take advantage of an unlimited upside in a fundamentally strong stock. We've already determined and ascertained that this is an extremely strong stock. They've taken care of business. And it's, the sentiment uh, is with the stock right now. So, um, it's, and when legging in with the merry put, uh, as we've done, uh, and it's providing us an opportunity to dollar cost average in a bearish move. So it has unlimited upside with the merry put, we're legging in, and if it goes down, what we can do is dollar cost average on that bearish move by adding additional, without adding rather, additional cost to the trade. So when the stock rebounds, it will be with a larger position, thereby, in fact, that's where the name comes, compounding and leveraging the bullish move. So let me show you more specifically what I'm doing here. Now, should the stock languish like it did after I got into it? If you recall, it went into a channel. So my timing on that was not perfect. Yet, you can do extremely well on this, even though my timing, and I made some mistakes, and I'm going to show those to you. <clears throat> okay, should it languish, the trader can sell to open, STO, sell to open a short call to help finance the long put thus completing the collar. Now, you're not going to get as much on that short 
call as you would had you initiated that as a caller to begin with. But see, our expectation to begin with was bullish, and I didn't want to cap the upside, so that's why I started and legged in with the married put. As a stock moves up, what you can do, and I do this, and you'll see this as I show you my trades, you can lock in profits by adjusting the long put to a higher strike. The rule is to determine the average monthly stock move and when it has moved 50% of that move of that range to the upside, then you can consider rehedging to the upside. Or if it moves a strike. Now it just so happens that um, uh, Fossil is one of those stocks that still is moving around. The options chain is in $5 increments now. Okay, not $1 increments. So um, the other thing is if it moved up a full strike, that could be uh, a place that you may consider rehedging at that point. So it moves up. You don't want it to retrace because you're going to have unrealized gains up here, and they can become realized losses if you let it uh, whips on you and come back down. You can lose. Now, when you do that, you can either roll the original put up. If the recapture value of the original put exceeds the cost to close, or you can merely add an additional set of puts. So if it doesn't make economic sense to close it, if you're just closing it to close it and you're not really capturing anything, don't do it. Just leave it <clears throat> and just go ahead and add another set of puts at a higher strike. Okay, I wanted to show you on Fossil now, uh, you know, this is not an extremely high beta stock. It's not the lowest in the world, but it's not, you know, it's not off the charts. But I wanted to show you here the moves. Now here is the move, here's by month. You can see these gray lines are the demarcation of each one of the months. So we have six months here. I should have snapshot it here so you could see the months, but I didn't do that. This is November up here, up here so it's October, September, August, July, and so forth. Okay, so you can see here the range on the first month here was 33, and I didn't measure this exact exactly, okay, so it was close enough because I just wanted to make a point. The range was approximately 33 to 42.50, but the total move was 26. Now, why is that? Because it started here, it came down, it went up, came down, and went back up again. So even though the range was here, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> was here between 33 and 42.50, because it came up and down several times, the total move here was about 26 points. This month, the range was 34 to 42. Total dollar move was 22. The range here was 34 to 41. The total dollar move was 9, and you could see that just by looking at it. We didn't have as much volatility that month. The total range in this month here was 39 to 50. The total move was 15. Total move this month was 47.50 to 55. Again, fairly flat, um, just kind of inching up. Total move was 10. And then the total range here, which was October, was 52.50 to 60, and the total move there was 10. Okay, so we had more volatility back here, didn't we? And this was when we were in a channel. When we were in a trend, it doesn't have the tendency to do that quite so much. So I added up all the move, right, and it was 92. I divided by the six months, and that gave us an average of 15. But if you want to be a little more accurate about it, it's probably less than that because in terms of the characteristic of the market right now because these moves here, the more recent moves, were not nearly what these moves were back here. So you could probably say 10 maybe. Okay, but I, the reason I'm showing you this is I want you to understand that that's $92 of move in a six-month period of time. If you could interpolate on that over a, a one-year period of time, that's over $180 worth of move in essentially a $60 stock. So there's a lot of opportunity to catch swings on this thing. Okay, continuing forward, the rule of thumb is that if you can lock in a gain for a net debit of 25 to 30 percent of the price appreciation of the bullish move, then do it. So in other words, if you had a $5 price appreciation bullish move 
if you can close out the original put, maybe capture some uh, remaining premium in that existing put, buy the new put, roll it up, and if you can do that whole operation for about a buck and a quarter to a buck and a half on a five dollar move, that makes sense. That's a good trade-off as far as I'm concerned. We use front month puts, which again have a higher gamma and are much more sensitive to stock movement, but we're very, very mindful of the fact that theta is going to have its effect. So I really don't want it to languish. If it begins to, I'm going to take corrective action on it. If the stock does not move, then consider selling a call to help finance the put. Because the long put is usually at a delta 0 0.50 or less, the bullish move will profit due to the fact that the stock moves at a delta of one. You guys know that. That's elementary stuff. Okay. Now, if it goes down, we're only hedged by, by 50% for the first dollar move. And then, of course, the deeper you go in the money, then this will be 0 0.6, 0 0.65, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and so forth as it goes down. But you don't necessarily have to do that. You can hold on to the stock in its entirety. And in my uh, situation, I have 1,000 shares in 10 puts, right? If you want to be more aggressive, you can take another approach to it, which I'm going to cover here in a moment. Now, the beauty of this strategy is that you are hedged, and, and you're hedged in a fundamentally strong stock that will likely rebound if beaten down. And we bought the stock at a discount to begin with. Now, I'm primarily a technical analyst, okay? But I do know this, that over a period of time that, that um, an undervalued stock will have a tendency to converge with what its true value is at some point in the future. So this is not a short-term strategy, but you can make um, some very solid returns by doing this anyway, just by catching the swings. So it's nice to know that to begin with, I bought the stock at a deep discount. You know, when I got into the stock, it was at 53, and it was probably, you know, 80, 85 dollar stock. I mean, that's a nice discount. So <clears throat> I'm okay knowing that if it goes down in a fundamentally strong stock, well managed company, no debt, low debt, that it's going to rebound. We take advantage of a bearish move by allowing the put to appreciate, and when it has found a support level, we liquidate the put. And we use the funds from that put to purchase more stock at a lower price. So there, in effect, what we're doing is we're dollar cost averaging or averaging down. But we are not doing it with out-of-pocket dollars. We're doing it with the proceeds from the put. Leave enough capital aside to fund if you can do this. It's not always possible to do this, but if you can, it's nice to be able to have enough set aside and earmark for a couple months worth of hedging if you have a situation where uh, the stock doesn't move much. Uh, and to be honest with you, if a stock moves very little in a month, I might have uh, four to six weeks, I may have a tendency to get out of the stock. And you know, just as the timing will be as it is, right, you get out of the stock and then it breaks out. So don't be too quick to get out of it especially if you've seen it's done that way in the past. Um, so at any rate, I, I'd like to be able to have a couple months set aside for hedging, and then you deploy the remainder to purchase additional shares. Now, for those traders who are more, more proficient with defining support and resistance, you may decide to be more aggressive in your trade management. When the stock breaks a well-defined area of support, and I'm saying well-defined, where would that be? with uh, Fossil right now, I would say if it breaks the 20, in my mind, that is significant. This is the 20 moving average right here. Okay, Here is support right here around 52, 51, 52, but it's going to hit here before it hits there, and then you have the 50 beneath that. So those areas are significant areas of support. Okay, so when the stock breaks well-defined support, you may choose to sell to close the stock position and play the trade to the downside with the long put. Now, you know, I know a lot of traders are saying, well, you know, maybe what I need to do is chase after more negative delta by buying more long puts. 
Well, if the stock's going down, you're going to be buying expensive protection unless you decide to do a, uh, a bear put and then uh, you know that has limited protection to the downside but you're selling a put against a long put to reduce the volatility so you can do that but instead of buying protection why not consider adjusting your delta position by selling off some stock now what you could do if it's moving down right, right now it still has a ways to go to hit the 20 I think you saw on the chart there you might consider selling off two or three or four hundred shares to bring the position to a delta neutral, more delta neutrality. And then if it breaks the 20, you could just sell the remainder of it and now you are completely uh, a delta negative. On top of that, you could have had a short call on in this trade. So if you have a short call with the stock, you don't want to release the stock before hedging the short call. So what you can do is you can hedge that short call with a long call to the upside and essentially make that a bear call and do that prior to releasing the stock position. And then when you do that, you have two bearish positions working for you, a bear call and a long put. Now I would say only do this on this hedging of the short call, only do this if there's enough premium left in the short call to make economic sense to do that. Once the stock has found support, now how do we know where it's support? This is, uh, it's a whole nother course, and that is understanding where is in fact support. But suffice it to say, we are pretty darn sure it's found support. At that point then, we repurchase the stock position, the original thousand shares, if in fact we release those thousand shares or any amount if we got rid of four or five hundred, we bring it back up to its original position plus we will add more shares as appropriate with the long put and short call appreciation. Now remember that we always rehedge with a new put, always. Now where are we going to place that new put? Um, if it's if it's bouncing, you probably do not want to uh, put it at or in the money because you know it just doesn't make sense. You just want a safety net underneath it. So you want to give it a little room to breathe to the downside because it's bouncing and coming up because maybe it's going to whip on and come back down again. Okay, So uh, that would be a situation where you might want to give it a little bit of room to the downside. The key is to only use the funds available from the long put and the short call if you happen to have the short call on. Thus, in effect, you're averaging down without adding cost of the trade. Now, some nuances on this. Okay, we want to begin the strategy on the right side of the market so that we will initially experience stock appreciation. But it's not crucial that that happens. You know, from a psychological standpoint, it certainly is nice. No question. But if it begins and you're wrong and you enter wrong and it comes and it crashes on you and you get, it looks like you're getting crushed on it, that's fine. You can make this thing work. Although it is preferable that the stock initially rises, it's not a crucial for that, uh, for that, for the strategy to work. We are in the stock for the long term, and I say one year or longer, so the stock fluctuation will present numerous opportunities to profit. There are only two scenarios which can hurt this strategy. Okay, and that is that the stock stagnates for a long period of time, then you need to make a decision. There's discretionary uh, thinking that's going to go on here. You're going to say it's stagnated, it's in a channel, it's been there for four weeks. Do I wait because it could break out? Do I get rid of it, and move my money, go someplace else? What do I do? And, and that's going to have to be at your own discretion. You can look to past channels to see how typically how long they would last, how, past consolidation periods, because many times it will begin, uh, it will remain in that consolidation for approximately the same amount of time. The second reason is that this strategy could fail is that the stock that you chose, it gets beaten down, but it doesn't come back. Okay, and that can happen. Uh, especially if there are things like accounting scandals, uh, things of that nature. Okay, something that was uh, seemingly at the outset solid, but then they're carting the uh, CEO or the CFO out in handcuffs. Uh, that is probably not going to rebound. Okay, so if that happens, um, 
Well, the first one, the antidote, is choose a higher beta stock so that you're less likely to have long consolidation periods. And if it does experience a period of consolidation, then consider selling a call to offset the cost of the put. The antidote for uh, failing to rebound is you want to try to reduce the cost basis as much as possible. You're going to have that long put and probably a short call. So you're probably, your cost base is going to be much reduced. You might try to reduce it a bit further and then just get out of the stock and move on. And you have a very small loss. Further nuances to this strategy, cash is a weak asset right now. Now the dollar has been rebounding a little bit here lately, but for the most part, cash is sort of a weak asset class right now, especially with the falling dollar versus shares that could be purchased in a fundamentally superior stock at a deep, deep discount. One can further leverage the deep discount by buying deep in the money calls with the gains from the put instead of buying stock. Now, I don't necessarily recommend this, but if you are a super aggressive trader, you could probably do this. It's a stock substitution strategy. I typically like to go in maybe at a delta of 0 0.80 and uh, pick something in the money and let it go up. Okay, so you're going to get more leverage if you do that. However, if the stock pays a dividend, that is just one more reason to consider buying the stock as opposed to or buying the additional shares as opposed to either capturing the cash. Because a lot of people just take the cash and let it languish in their account. As you know, it sits there, the dollar goes down, and you're losing. So, uh, and in fact, uh, it, it might be better to just buy the stock. Okay, uh, here are my trades. Um, I don't want to get bogged down with a lot of this, but I want to see, go through this. Um, right here is my cost basis. I, I entered this on the 27th of September. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and right now, if I were to close my positions, I would uh, close it at $70,109. So that's a decent trade. And I'm going to continue to trade this, and I will tr tr uh, trade this to optimize the trend. I'm, I'm going to show you right here the actual trades that I placed. This is a snapshot from Options Express, and I'm going to see if I can quickly go through this uh, without getting too bogged down on this, just to show you what I've done. Uh, I bought to open, there's 1,000 shares, and it came in different lots. If you add all of this up, it comes to 1,000. Then I bought to open the 10 uh, uh, puts at strike 50, and I paid 50 cents for that, so that was 53.91 for all of that. Uh, and this is what I did. You know when it start consolidating? And I'm saying, doggone it, it's consolidating. Well, I, bet I don't want to just sit there. So what I did is I sold to open the 55 call. I got 50 cents for it, so it actually offset the cost of the put, even though I waited. I did that on 10.1. So this was, what, four or five days later. All right. And then down here, uh, let's see what I did. Um, this expired. The put expired. So I bought another, uh, bought to open another put. And this one was at 50 again. But this was November. And you can see here that it expired, right? So the put expired. Also, the call expired. So that was a, a net wash because uh, the put and the call offset each other. And then I bought another put here at 50. Um, again, I sold another call at, and this was on the 18th, uh, the 55 call, I got a buck 95 for it. But guess what? The stock went up. This was a mistake, okay? Because it started ripping to the upside. So what I did is I bought to close it because I didn't want to hamper the upside. I wanted to take advantage of it. So I bought it back at 340. So what did I end up losing? About a buck 45 on that transaction. Okay, now you can beat yourself up over that or you can just make money. Okay, it's your choice. So uh, then what I did is I, I rolled up the put. If you can see here, I sold to close the November 50 put. I got 45 cents, so I captured some of that, and then I opened the 55 put at a buck 60. Okay, and then moving forward, um, let's see what I got here. Uh, okay, 
it's moving up further. So what I did is I sold the close, the 55 put, I got 99 cents for that, and I rolled it up to the 60. I paid 294 for that. And then what I did is I sold out to 60. I thought it was, oh, maybe it's going to, I think it's going to round over here. So I sold out to 60, uh, call, and I got 220 for it. But guess what? That was a mistake because what, look what I had to do here. It was tearing up here even further. So I bought to close this put right here, the, excuse me, this call, this 220 call for 275. So that cost me 55 cents. But see, all the while, I'm making money on the stock as it's going up because it's going up at a delta of one. Should I have not done this? Sure, absolutely. But do I absolutely have a crystal ball? No. Okay. And then here, uh, I bought to open. This was coming into earnings because earnings was on the 9th, I believe, before market. Uh, so what I wanted to do was add uh, a little more negative delta. So I bought five here, five additional puts. So I have 15 to the downside. Uh, I bought to open uh, 65, uh, December 65 put at a buck 70. And I, uh, let's see, let me see what I did. Oh, here's what I did. I sold it. I had to sell the clothes because this thing was just ripping up. Yeah, I sold the clothes, the 50, the 65 put. It went all the way up above 70, and then I captured, I bought to open the 70. And you can see all the numbers down here. And here's what I did just recently today is I sold to open the 70 call for a buck 30. So with all that said, this is from the position trade. If I were to close all of this right now, I could close this for a net of 70, what was it, 70,000, whatever it was, 700 and whatever. Okay? So some final comments. Some traders will be reluctant to spend money on put protection, but that's very short-sighted. If you have a fundamentally strong stock that has exhibited consistent movement, you're either making money as the stock goes up, albeit less due to the put cost, but don't, you know, you cannot separate out the put cost. I know some rookie traders, even advanced traders, they'll, they'll say, they'll beat themselves up and say, I never should have bought the put because I'm losing money on it. You have to take a look at the total trade because you're making money as it goes up. You don't know for sure that it wouldn't have gone down. Or if it goes down, you're making money in the put to apply to additional stock to purchase at a lower price. When the stock rebounds from a short-term correction, you will benefit handsomely as the stock moves up, and it will be with a larger stock position. Finally, and most importantly, you are insulated from the flash crash type events, and you are provided peace of mind. When the stock retreats, stock goes up, stock goes down. I certainly prefer the stock to rise, but if it doesn't, I'm perfectly fine with that. And in fact, I will welcome it because it allows me the ability to purchase additional shares of a rock solid stock at a discount with no further out of pocket expense. I don't stress over my trades. I don't fear the 9-11 type event. I'm sleeping like a baby and I don't hover over my trades during the day. The compound collar can build long-term wealth if managed properly, and I would have to say that's a pretty darn good deal. I think that's the ideal scenario. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to my business partner, Ron Haight, and Ron has a few things to go over. Hey, Mark. Uh, thanks so much. Appreciate uh, you explaining that. That is awesome. And uh, what I'm going to share with you guys right now is, well, now my screen just froze. That was supposed to be seamless. Isn't that the way it's supposed to go? Here it comes. Yeah, what I want to share with you guys is, uh, there we go. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Mark explained to you the compound collar and it's a fantastic trading system and it can really improve your results it really allows you to pass a sleep test and mark wouldn't you say that's one of the biggest things about that trade that it does pass there's, a sleep test yeah, there's no there's no question about it and uh, the returns can be very handsome and, the, and for those that want to build um, conservatively but very nicely in their IRA account and they can't afford to lose money this is a perfect strategy 
And you said with the recent downtrend that no problem, right? Because there are puts in place. There's absolutely no problem. And because they were in place prior to the downturn, I got, uh, of course, I picked them up at a lower volatility. And as I said, when it goes down, I don't have to chase after more puts. If I want to get more delta short, I can just sell some of the stock. And, and when it repositions at a lower price, I can just reposition the caller. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Absolutely. If it, when you guys are trading, it's got to pass the sleep test. And that, that's so valuable. So you just heard Mark go over his entire uh, compound collar. So if your brain's overheating after all those adjustments, there's no worries. You'll be able to review this presentation. It is recorded, and we can show you step-by-step -step how to adjust at markettamer.com. Now I want to share with you something that we've created that is truly amazing. We were often, at, often asked, you know, how do you find stocks that have a really high probability of moving in a direction over the short term? So if you could take 30,000 stocks, pass them through a rigorous set of tests to produce just the best of the best trading ideas every day. That would make life a lot easier, right? So we worked night and day, and after many, many months and a lot of work, we began to test this system. And the system worked not one month, not two months, but every month. So we knew we were onto something. We were eager to test it with some real money. So back when we began testing this in January, the algorithm said, OK, it's time to get bearish. So we did a bear call on the Russell. Now, you guys are options traders, so many of you know exactly what this bear call is and what it does and how it makes money. We are going to make money in a sideways trend, a bearish trend, even a slightly bearish trend. So we put this bear call on because the algorithm said we're going bearish. We made 815 bucks. And we did absolutely no work. Back in January, we'll start there. These are January 21st trading ideas. Every single day, our algorithm picks the best of the best trades. There's over 1,000 lines of coding in this, in this program. It picks the best of the best. They're posted to the website by 6.30 PM Eastern every night. That means you have the entire evening and the following morning to do your due diligence, check out these stocks, and then you can trade them. So there's 13 picks there. 10 of them are winners. The winners beat the losers hands down. But this was just the beginning. Now this system's picking trades every day for the next day, the best of the best. But then we began to think about, what about market turning points? Could the algorithm actually predict or confirm a trend has changed, and is it tradable? Well. Uh, this is where we were pleasantly surprised. The results became extraordinary. On February 17th, we got a golden crossover. The market went bullish. The algorithm said bullish. We got an 11% rally when it triggered. 11%. That took place in what? Month and a half? Two months? July 8th, golden crossover. Market rallied 6% in just a couple days. Remember, very, very rigorous set of criteria. Everything's got to meet to put us in the best position to win, or it won't trigger. You simply sit back. How about September 3rd? Remember that? Remember that? We rallied hard out of the August low. I remember Mark and I were in class talking about it, saying, you know, all this bad news, it sure isn't breaking down a whole lot. Market went up. Algorithm confirmed it. 9% rally before the exit was hit. 9%. That took two months. Are you OK making 9% in two months? But now you might say, well, geez, those are bullish crossovers, right? What about bearish crossovers? Did you get any of those? Here's one. May 5th, the day before the flash crash. That's what really got our attention. When the criteria was met, day before the flash crash, the algorithm said, the market's not right here. You know, we're going to roll over. Now. It got you in the day before. That was a very thinly traded day. So could you have gotten out right then and there? Maybe, maybe not. Mark talked about it. It was just like, holy mackerel. The market's just collapsing like 100 points a minute, it seemed. Well, then it ripped back up. And you might say, well, did, did the algorithm get caught? Did it get tricked? Algorithm said, no, don't think so. And what happened? Rolled right back over. The algorithm knew to get in ahead, and it was not tricked by the subsequent rally. 
and then we, we crashed another 6% in a matter of two weeks. So if you add these moves up, these four triggers from February till now, this is besides the day-to-day -day picks that the algorithm supplies. You have 11%, 6%, that's 17 that's 23 that's 32%. Let me ask you a question. Would you be happy making four trades and making 32% from February to now? I think that would beat the pants off pretty much all the market, maker, the market uh, the hedge fund guys out there. Now, you guys are option traders, right? I'm an options trader. Mark's an options trader. These moves, when the crossovers were triggered, you saw they only took a couple days until they hit. Some took up to two months. If you bought an at-the-money option using the S&P as your proxy, right at the money, let's say we got a crossover today. Okay, for instance, middle of November, we're in November's expiry. January, that's it. Just buy January option at the money as the example. If the S&P moves 5%, you guys can do this math right now, right after we're done here. On a 5% move in the S&P, that option would double in just a couple days to a couple weeks. If you use that on the 9 or 11% move, you're not talking about 100% gain. You're talking about two 300% gains. So would you be happy with 100% gain twice and maybe a 200% gain twice for four whole trades? And then you can just sit there and do nothing the rest of the year. That is the power of the crossovers within this algorithm. It's truly extraordinary. And it, this is the definition of a winning recipe for success. The winners have to beat the losers. The algorithm is absolutely unbelievable with its crossovers, calling the market turns. The trading idea is day-to-day. -day. The winners trounce the losers on a day-to-day -day basis. So could you imagine having free access to our trading ideas algorithm every day? Well, you can. We got a special offer for you guys. When you become a member of MarketTamer.com, we will give you two free months. Other people do not have this chance. You guys got two months access to the algorithm. And your first month at Market Tamer is going to be free. All you have to do we are, is pay the discount membership fee. We've already reduced that for you. And to take any risk out of this equation for you, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not happy, we give your money back. We have to put up to earn your business. We want to improve your trading. If we don't, you get your money back. You will get 100% access to our complete educational suite, everything. 40 on-demand lessons, you can skip around, take whatever lessons you want. You will get live webinars with Mark and I on a weekly basis. We will show you how to turn the losers into winners. Even on the algorithm, when it says, you know, let's say bearish this stock, but then it turns bullish or vice versa, we can show you how to turn those, those losers into winners. We also have a forums where you can ask questions where there's a whole community that we interact together and answer those questions. And the bottom bullet point is arguably, it's absolutely priceless. You get a free trade review. What does that mean? How many times have you thought you wanted to place the trade, and then you knew if you went to place that trade, it was going to go the other way? You can run your trade ideas by us. You make a post to the website under Beat the Pros, and you say, hey, I want to do this bullish, this bullish trade on Apple. What do you guys think? Have I covered all my bases? This is where I think it's going to go. This is how I'm going to exit. This is how I'm going to adjust. Mark, Gareth, and I will come in, read your post, give you our thoughts on the trade. It's like going to the doctor for a physical. You're taking your trade to the doctors to get it looked at to see if you're missing something. And remember, you get the trading ideas. You're also going to follow Mark. Mark, you have FOSS, or uh, excuse me, Mark has Fossil posted in Watch the Pros. When Mark does an adjustment to the Fossil trade, he'll go in there, he'll post it, he'll tell you why he did it. So you can follow along and you say, hey, Mark, why did you buy that long put on Fossil? I don't understand. Mark will have a follow-up post and saying, hey, John, this is why I did this. You know, we were hedging risk here, we were hedging risk there. So, it, you know, it's one thing to learn how to do it, but you need to know the why, the when, the how. Why did you do it? You know, Mark's had a lot of experience on this. You can leverage that experience by following along with him. We have many of our members that have spent tens of thousands of dollars. Maybe some of you guys here have done that as well. 
Our goal is we will only succeed if you succeed. That's why we put the 30-day money-back guarantee on there. The marketing folks, they don't like it. They said if your service is so valuable, then don't give a guarantee. And we said that, and Mark and my reply and Garrett's reply is, listen, if we don't earn your business, we don't want your money. We got to make a difference in your trading or you get your money back. There's absolutely no risk. So thanks to Chris, we've taken our membership down from $4.99 to $2.99. That's it. And we've removed the first month's charge. All subsequent, subsequent charges will only be $99 a month. That is it. There's no long-term commitment. There's no contracts. Here's the deal, short and sweet. You give us $299, bucks, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. No questions asked. It's ironclad. You just say, hey, Ron, Mark, you know what? You guys are nice, but you know what? I don't like it. Boom, money back. You will get your first month free, so you're not paying anything more than $299 for the first 30 days. We're going to give you two months of trading ideas, the black box algorithm access. We have folks paying us 300 bucks a month for that right now. We're giving you guys two months free. And if you stay with us after the, after the first 30 days, our educational product is only $99 a month. It's straight to the point. If you go to our website right now, you're going to see a much different price. It's a whole lot higher. So if you, to take us up on this offer, you need to go to markettamer.com, very important, forward slash best deal. It's one word and it's lowercase. Markettamer.com slash best deal. So before I throw it over to uh, Mark and Chris, I already got one question uh, regarding the guarantee and the price. So let me just re re say it. We don't play games. I'm a customer service guy. My previous job, I was the head of customer service. Everything got through me. You guys are my most important, uh, call it project. <laughs> you guys are our number one. We got to make you happy or you get your money back. There's no strings. There's no surprise charges. There's no follow. It is what it is. It's 299 bucks, which is cheaper than the 499. You're saving 200 bucks. We're giving you 600 bucks worth of membership to the trading ideas, and you're only going to pay 99 bucks, 99 dollars a month thereafter. So you're getting not only education, but you're getting the trading ideas given to you every single day. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Um, how long does it stay at $99 a month? That's a good question for life. Gang, uh, the monthly fee is $149 a month. You guys are grandfathered <clears> in for life. There is no change. So if you decide to stay with us for three months, a year and three months, it, the, you, you, there's, there's no change. We, we, Mark and I, we're straight up guys. There's no baloney. So there's not going to be any surprises. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it there. I want to take your questions, and if you have any, if you have questions about what we offer, what we do, uh, feel free to chime in. So, Chris, do you have any comments? I wanted to thank you guys just for uh, coming on tonight. Um, I I don't know how closely everyone's been you know following the market, but uh, it's it's getting kind of interesting right now, and it's it's really kind of I mean, I, I'm getting a little bit excited because we've been moving higher for a while, and I've been making pretty decent money on on the way up. But you know, anybody who's been trading the last few years, you know, you're always kind of waiting for the next shoe to drop. And uh, so, when Mark and I were talking about that dynamic a few weeks ago, I I knew I had to get him on to talk about how he's a uh, you know, trading trading the market. He's he's using you know the compound caller strategy, which is is effective for doing exactly that. And um, you know, so I hope you guys were able to take notes and and get some ideas about how you can protect yourself if we do head south. But not only protect yourself, but t take advantage of of the uh, eventual you know rebound to to newer newer price highs. But uh, uh, Ron, did you want to take questions? We've we've run over our, our scheduled hour, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll be happy to do so. Um, if you guys have questions, feel free to type them in. Um, the offer I just put in there. So thank you so much, Angela, for asking. Uh, we're going to extend this offer till midnight Sunday. We usually like to keep it just a couple days, but Chris has recorded this uh, as well as I have. 
and he's going to email it out to everybody. Some folks had scheduling commitments, conflicts. So you're going to have an opportunity to rewatch, you know, watch this again. If you have questions uh, for us directly, I will go ahead and put our email address on the screen. Yeah, and and yeah, just so everybody understands, one of the things that Ron has done here is is you know, he's taken all the risk out out of the the membership, and that's something I asked him to do. So that if if anybody wants to join them, and maybe you're not entirely sure if if it if this is the thing for you, you you guys can go sign up, and you. You know, if, if if it's not right, you you call Ron, you call Mark, and you say, you know, I really appreciate the opportunity. This just isn't for me, and you're not out of thing. But on on the other hand, uh, even at this uh, price level, it doesn't take a lot for you to earn your money back. Uh, you know, if if you can save yourself some money on the downside, or even improve your results when the market does rebound. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Chris. Um, gang, the folks that are paying us uh, $299 a month for just the algorithm, not the education, um, those people are paying $299 a month for the algorithm and 100 bucks a month for the education. They're paying 300 bucks a month, and they already paid a membership fee. You guys are coming in at $299 and only 99 bucks a month, and we're giving you two, the, the two months of the algorithm. If you stay with us, past the two months of the algorithm, the algorithm is only two ninety nine a month. But you're not your card's not going to be hit for that. You have to manually request that you opt in for that. But my point is that the folks that are paying us, they're not leaving because of the algorithm. We're giving them fantastic value in the education of course, but the algorithm is paying it for itself. So you guys are going to have two months to test that out and not pay us a dime for that. Um, in terms of how much trading capital you might need, that's a great question. Uh, the algorithm, when it spits out trades every day, the be and they're all the best of the best, or when we get the golden cross, or what we call the death cross, which is the bearish crossover, first of all, when we get a major crossover, you guys are emailed. There's no work for you. An email shows up in your inbin that says, we got the cross. It's time to go after it. But you can trade options. Right now, at the money options going out to the S&P in, let's say, January, you know, what are they, three, four bucks a share? And if the algorithm says, hey, uh, you know, Apple is bullish, well, Apple's a $300 stock, right? But we could go use an option if we want for a fraction of that cost. So you don't have to worry about actually buying the underlying. You can use options to your, to your advantage. And as a matter of fact, um, tomorrow evening, uh, let me just check my schedule here, but it's at nine tomorrow evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm actually hosting a class on the trading ideas algorithm. And I'm going to show people how to use it, what your entries are, what your exits are. Um, the algorithm does supply entries. We teach you how to use a trailing stop for exits. It's very, very, you know what? It's emotionless trading. You get in, you do it. When it does this, you're out. There's none of this, you know, I wouldn't call up Mark and say, hey, Mark, where do you think I should get out? And then Mark says, hey, Ron, where do you think I should get out? No, 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 there's, there's no talking. <laughs> there's no talking allowed. <laughs> you're out. You're in here. You're out here. It's over. So the folks that are using it are loving it. We have some people using it for just a day. They're making 1%, 2 3% a day. And other folks are keeping them as swing trades, whereby they hold on for a couple days to a week or two. So um, the algorithm itself, you guys are getting an offer that other folks have not had the pleasure of getting. So you have a special opportunity, and as Chris said, there's, you know, Chris said he didn't, you know, make make it a great offer, keep it, you know, take the risk out of it. We've done it. So I'm hoping to see a bunch of you guys uh, in tomorrow night's class. You will get that invite if you sign up. Okay, let's see here. What questions we got. Uh, ETFs. We, uh, Mark and I do trade ETFs, and. The algorithm also kicks out ETFs. Okay. Okay. Um, Mark, can you? Let's see the question here. 
can you speak to your technical, like when you teach technical analysis, there was a question about that. You know, do we teach people technical analysis? Could you talk about confluence and the power of that, just real briefly? Uh, yeah, and I use the analogy of um, you know asking ten people uh, their opinion about something and getting back the same opinion. So uh, if I segue into uh, putting together a chart and building a chart and the types of indicators that I will use, and what I do initially when I have the chart, first of all, I'm a candlestick guy, um, and uh, you know I've been with I've used candlesticks for a long time. I'm very comfortable with it, and all of my stu uh, my students that I teach understand how I do that, but there are uh, some definitive candlestick formations that are high probability reversals, but they're even more high probability when you combine them with trend lines, moving averages, uh, chart patterns like double tops, double bottoms, um, uh, triangles, and the, and the like, uh, Fibonacci levels as well. So I can put all of these things together, and I also will, will use oscillators, but I don't clutter up the chart. I'm, I'm really simplistic about the way that I approach it. If I only use price and volume, that really is all I would need, but it's nice to have the other stuff too. But I start with uh, trend lines and chart patterns and Fibonacci levels, major moving averages. I don't use moving averages like a lot of people do. I use them more for support and resistance. Um, for shorter term trading, I'll use them for directionality. And then I'll use the MACD uh, and uh, MACD histogram and, and uh, stochastics 1233 full stochastics. And that's essentially my chart. And um, you can go over to Robinhood Trader if you want. And, I can t I, and uh, I've called, well, I'm <laughs> I don't want to blow smoke. You go over and look at it. And you tell me if I haven't called a lot of the major moves and continue to do so. So I just feel real comfortable with it and I can teach you how to do it. Okay, thanks so much Mark. Um, someone wanted to see the algorithm and they just wanted me to clarify something or, or just cover it. So I'm just going back here and here. Okay, the black box algorithm. We are going to unleash this on, you know, more publicly. We also need you guys using it for testimonials, which is something I, I didn't say. Uh, one of the benefits for us giving you guys 60 days free access is you will see the power and you're going to say, I've never had so much fun paying 300 bucks a month for something. That, that's the whole point. So we're, we're taking that risk out of it as well by giving you 60 days access to that, as, to that too. Um, there, there, there's usually two groups of traders if we sort of lump them to get, lump them into two groups. One are folks that want to be at the market every day. They just love it. They breathe it. It's in their blood. They just can't get away from it. You know, it's like the best bag of chocolate you can get. You know, you never can get enough. And then we have folks that, hey, I got three kids, two dogs, a cat, an iguana, a guinea pig, a parrot, and I got to go pick up grandma. It's like, well, you can't be trading all day. How, how would you possibly do this, right? See, so you have people that, you know, needs need some extra work done for them in a good you know in a good way it's like I can't be watching the market all day well the algorithm does two things it satisfies the people that want to trade every day whether you want to make it a day trade or if you want to make it a couple day to a couple week trade or you just wait for the crossovers I had one I, it was funny uh, mark I was talking to a, a friend of mine and he said, are you telling me there's four crossovers in eight months? And I said, yeah. I said, what's wrong with that? He goes, four trades? I said, yeah, it's 32%. He said, oh, you know, you don't have to be in the market every day if you don't want to be. You can just wait for these crossovers to occur because the percentages are so great that the move should continue. Um, you know, the criteria is proprietary, so I can't share that with you. All you care about is, is it right or is it wrong? The answer is it's right. And then if you use options, this 32% that I told you about, um, 11 and 6 is 17, 23, that 32%, if you used at the money options, you guys go do the math. The returns, I'm not even going to tell you what the returns were. They're, they're that extraordinary. So, it, it, Hey, it Ron. Does, yeah. Um, you, you brought up the fact that we, we really do want, if, you, if they succeed, if, if our people succeed, we succeed, 
And didn't you tell me that we were approached just very recently by a major financial news outlet and they, they're very interested in this and they want to see our results? That's correct. Yeah, thanks for, for bringing that up. We were approached and they've seen the results. They're blown away and they're like, they said to us, uh, get us testimonials, people that are actually doing it with real money. Even though our system can be back tested and the data cannot be uh, warped or changed because it's all archived, um, they want people using it and then you say, hey, my name is, my name is David and I did this max return. And then, if you're willing, we'll get your picture and name in a major magazine, and uh, you'll be a little bit of a celebrity too. But uh, we are so ecstatic by it. It's uh, it almost it, it stops us. We can't stop smiling from it. Um, I have a follow-up question uh, from a person. Let me see. It's actually two people, and they want to ex me explain the the offer. Okay, the the two ninety nine is the membership fee for our educational suite. You pay no first month fee, so you just pay $2.99 for those first 30 days, and you can get your money back, of course. If you stay past day 30, on day 31, you'd be charged $99 a month until you leave us. The free two months of the algorithm, the trading ideas algorithm, that people are paying us right now $2.99 a month for and these people aren't leaving, our retention rate is off the charts because it's so good. But we haven't launched this publicly yet. This is about as publicly as, we, as, as we've gotten with it. Um, so you're going to gain 60 days free access to that. When those 60 days end, your card will not be billed at other $2.99. It is up to you to say, Ron or Mark, we want in, charge me $2.99 a month. And the only reason you would even request you're going to have to make us charge you, is if you're making money, because otherwise you're not going to want it. So I guess we call it a different approach that either we put up and we, we, you know, what we tell you is 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 worth it, or you don't stick around. So I think it puts the onus on us to make sure that we deliver. So appreciate that question. Basically, you're giving them a free look for 60 days. Absolutely. And then if they like it, they can call you and they say, I want more of it. And if they don't like it, then they don't have to do anything. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's no strings. There's no secret charges here. Thanks, for thanks, Chris. Um, we began back testing this back into January. That's when we began back testing. That was sort of like December, January. But we, this has been a slow release to go live. We don't want to. We're getting close to opening it up for more people, but we're doing it very slowly, very controlled. All right. Let me go back to the. Uh, there's a question on the web on on where to go. The website is markettamer.com forward slash best deal. Okay. Uh, there's there was two. I'm sorry, Mark, if I could just jump in. There was, yeah. a, there was a follow up to the black box. You are given the entry price. So if it said go long Goldman Sachs, you are given a price the stock must trade to in order for it to trigger. If it does not trigger, there's no trade. And then we will show you how to use a trailing stop. That way you can maximize your return. And that's what I'm going to be doing with everybody tomorrow night. So if you guys sign up now, You'll be given the invite to tomorrow night's class already. Go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. Well, I just uh, there's a lot of people don't see that there is two T's there. It's Market Tamer. MarketTamer.com. Um, I wanted to mention uh, that there's a lot of brains behind this. Uh, our fo founder uh, is Gareth Fury, and uh, he just graduated uh, Honors Wharton School of Business MBA, and. Uh, my understanding, and Ron, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's a couple of you know, brilliant mathematicians that actually, along with Gareth, put this thing together. So uh, there's a lot of brains behind it. Yes, indeed. Um, let's see what else. Uh, in terms of the live classes, uh, there's three to five live classes a week, and 
you do gain access to the fact where you can follow Mark in his trade. And you can also ask us questions about your, your trade. Everything's from an educational standpoint, so uh, I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you what we can consider and, and, and give you scenarios and so forth. Um, you guys already know that. But uh, you can post your trade ideas as well. So instead of saying, oh my god, I earned this trade, I was such a blankety blank, we take that risk out of it for you as well. We'll help you with that. Okay. Um, I think we hit tomorrow night's seminar uh, on the trading ideas algorithm is at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. And that session will be recorded. So if you can't make it, even though you're going to join tonight, uh, it will be emailed to you. So all right. Um, I don't want to take up anybody's, uh, anybody's time here. Uh, Mark, do you have any other comments or Chris? I just want to say thanks again to Chris, and thank you for all of you attending this evening. We did go over. Um, I got a little bit wind, uh, long-winded, and I apologize for that. But I hope you got something out of the compound collar. It's an excellent and very conservative way to build your portfolio. And uh, if you come on board with this, I can show you all the nuances and the little tricks and tips that it takes to be very successful with it. All right, you guys. So we're going to wrap it up. Um, we did hit the record button, so the presentation was recorded, and I'll get that uh, uploaded to the website, and I'll try to get an email off to everyone once it's available. So if you want to rewatch it, uh, by all means. And um, you know, Mark, Ron, thanks again for taking some time out of your schedule and sharing with us. Oh, thank, thank you, Chris. So yeah, I appreciate you guys coming. I know you guys are very busy. Chris, you're busy as well, and. Uh, you guys coming here, spending time with us is greatly appreciated. Thank, thank you so much. Glad to do it. Okay, right. you guys take care now. All right. Good night, everybody. Okay. Good night. Bye bye.